Sit back and throw one back with your pinky in the air and a middle finger to the world. And join me, the eclectic gentleman, Stephen Watts, as we look back on this day in pro wrestling history. But before we do, put that drink down, like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get our wrestling history on. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is September 1st. And we're going to start off as we always do on a positive note. That's right, these are your pro wrestling birthdays. 1961, The Beast from the East, Bam, Bam, Bigelow. 1962, the man's got a pretty fine cowboy hat, Tracy Smothers. 1971, the adopted son of Jimmy Snuka, Sim Snuka. 1972, England's own Doug Williams. And last but not least, 1987, the draw, Sammy Callahan. And we're going to keep that positivity train a-rolling. That's right, these are your pro wrestling history highlights for September 1st. Jumping in the Wayback Machine and going all the way to 1868, where we see Homer Lane defeat James H. McLaughlin for the American Collar and Elbow title in Utica, New York. Fast forwarding all the way to 1923, Clarence Weber defeats Billy Meesk in Melbourne, Australia to win the Australian heavyweight title for a second time. Leaping over the 30s and going into the 40s, 1941. Wild Red Berry defeats Danny McShane for the World Light Heavyweight title in Hollywood, California, ending McShane's third reign and beginning Barry's third. Five years later in 1946, George Becker defeats Babe Sharkey in Portland, Oregon to win the Pacific Northwest, later Los Angeles, World Heavyweight title. Grooving into the 60s, 1967, Killer Kowalski defeats Bearcat Wright in Melbourne, Australia for the International Wrestling Alliance World Heavyweight title. This began Kowalski's fifth reign and ended Wright's second. Grabbing my best polyester suit and going to the 70s, 1972, Johnny Valentine defeats Johnny Powers to win the National Wrestling Federation North American Heavyweight title in Cleveland, Ohio, ending Powers' third reign. Five years later, in 1977, Don Leo Jonathan defeats Otto Wands for the Catch Wrestling Association World Heavyweight title. Staying in 1977, Dory Funk Jr. defeats Cyclin Negro in Amarillo, Texas to win the Amarillo NWA International Heavyweight title, ending Negro's third reign and beginning Funk's second. Our final stop in the 70s, 1979. The Worldwide Wrestling Federation Intercontinental Championship is officially introduced with Pat Patterson as the first champion, having won a fictional tournament in Rio de Janeiro. In actuality, he had defeated Ted DiBiase for the Worldwide Wrestling Federation North American title, and the promotion decided to replace it with the Intercontinental title. Grabbing my boombox and going to the 80s, 1980. Tommy Rich defeats Jimmy Valiant for the AWA Southern Heavyweight title in Memphis, Tennessee. This began Rich's third reign and ended Valiant's fourth. Two years later in 1982, Paul Jones defeats Jack Briscoe to win the NWA Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight title in Charlotte, North Carolina, ending Briscoe's second reign. Moving to 1986... Denny Brown defeats Steve Regal to win the NWA World Junior Heavyweight title in Greensville, South Carolina, beginning his third reign. And last but not least, 1990. One of the most memorable angles in Memphis wrestling took place during a live Saturday morning wrestling broadcast on WMC-TV in Memphis, Tennessee. As Eddie Gilbert attempted to run down Jerry Lawler with his brother Doug's car in the parking lot outside of the studio. The car hit Lawler, who rolled over the hood and fell to the ground, suffering a bruised hip. Fans watching the show on television actually called the police to the WMC studios to report what happened. Those were your short but sweet pro wrestling history highlights for September 1st. I'm the eclectic gentleman, Stephen Watts, and we'll see you tomorrow.